Hi Intune friends, this is the second video in package Adobe Acrobat Reader or the full one, it's both in same. So we wanted to remove this uh, sign in, we don't need the sign in if we're just going to look normal uh, uh, PDF files. So let's uh, see what we can do for that. So there is a web page here and I'm going to put that in the description of this video where it says, uh, let's see down here, how can I use Adobe Acrobat in read-only mode? So that means we don't require people to log in. They can log in, but we don't require it. So we need two uh, register key. Actually, I think we need only one, but we can, we can put both here. So I'm going to copy part of this and I'm going to ask ChatGTP to write this. And I separate that from this file. I'm going to add it, but uh, for now, uh, uh, put it separate. Write a PowerShell. So now it's a new script, script that adds two registry keys. And the installer in Intune runs as 32 bit, and we want this as a 30, uh, 64 bit uh, key. So I'm going to use, I'm going to ask it to use uh, a tool that I know uh, using reg.exe with the switch, uh, switch forward slash reg 64. And the keys. I want are let's paste what we got from the web page, see if it understands this. Computer, that's pretty normal. Uh, add, maybe we can keep it as it is. And then, oh, I hit enter. We'll see if it understands what we wanted. I think maybe not. We'll see here. Uh, it's a bit small. Um, actually, I think it does understand reg add. I think actually it did understand and do this good. Okay, let's trust the uh, JetGTP. So I copy this code. I give a pretty bad explanation, but it looks like it actually did it. Uh, and we want that at the end. So this is from the previous video. Uh, where we created this mostly by HGTP. And here, I'm just going to put the comment myself here, create the registry keys to not force login. And we paste the code there. Uh, a lot of variables, which I think could have been put here directly. So, wow. Yeah. Well, let's see if this runs. So I'm going to copy this uh, code and run it in a PowerShell ISE just to see if it works because I don't want to rerun the full script and it has to run as administrator because it's HKey local machine and we don't have permission there elsewhere. So I have some old stuff in here. Yeah, that was the old registry key for the same thing actually. Smaller code. This is a lot big more code, but if it works, let's run it. So I'm, I'm going to open up the registry registry place so where they want it hk local machine software policies and if i do a little refresh here there is an adobe adobe acrobat dc oh it created that one maybe the installer created that one fine but we are missing two values here or oh it's adding um that's come from uh, our installer who created this, but that's not what we want. We wanted the uh, uh, feature lockdown, wasn't it here? Uh, Acrobat DC feature lockdown. Yeah, well, we don't have it. Let's run this first and see if we get error. So I click on F5 or this button. It says operation uh, successfully two times. So if we go back here and do a little refresh, do we have two new values here? Well, we got one value, were they not supposed, and we got one value here also. Okay, they were maybe not supposed to be in the same. Let me just verify uh, the, the page here. The following key, I think they should have been in the same place. Maybe not. 
No, it actually did better than I could have done myself. It did exactly what I wanted. So under future lockdown, we should have this reduced. This is the most important. And then under there, it should create this key called CPM. And it actually did that. Yes, with this value. Okay, so thanks, uh, ChatGP. This is very good code. I removed their comment because I already created mine, but could have kept everything. So we have one more thing. Uh, for new users who never started, they're going to get the end user uh, agreement. We don't want that. So I'm going to add that to, uh, uh, I'm going to ask ChatGTP to write that also. So just going to ask, uh, just to see, sorry, I'm jumping around here. Let's see what this one does. You remember when I started Adobe Acrobat, it asked us to log in. Now with this registry key, it shouldn't. So let's do that first. So we start Adobe Acrobat. And now we shouldn't get this uh, sign in. We can start to use it directly. If we want to sign in because we have a license, then we could. So we get these questions also that we could maybe remove. So there is no forcing us, but we can sign in. So we have, uh, so we can still use this. But we wanted to uh, accept the end user agreement also. Let's see, uh, for Adobe Acrobat script, please add end user license agreement is uh, accepted by default. And we can't copy the full script because I have changed it now. So I'm just going to see what it, just going to steal that part and add to the script. So it should be under install arguments, hopefully. This one here, for some reason, um, ChatGTP do it wrong. It should not be an S. It should just be EULA underscore accept. But I, I steal this. And if we look in the code, it actually put it here at the end, but again, the S should be gone. So I go to our script. We can put it, we can put it at the end also. We can put it uh, in the beginning as well. doesn't matter. And remove the S. So now we should have a pretty good script. So I save this one and we're going to uninstall it and run it again just to verify because that it works because you don't want to create the Intune win file uh, with an error then you have to recreate everything i was just interested to take the version here because we have uh, we have a few xxx that we need to um, change so i'm going to put adobe acrobat and put the version here so it's 23 again if you see version 21 installed on yours that's because the patch file have failed to install uh, this one here we don't see the whole file, the MSP file. So 23.006.2320. Okay, perfect. We take that. So we copy this version number. We're going to use that a lot for our naming. So I'm going to close this file because we're going to rename it. I definitely want to save it. We can close uh, Notepad++. We're probably going to come uh, uh, back to it. Let's go back to our uh, source files. So here our source. We want to rename the install file. So we right click here, rename, remove some of these X's. We want to keep one for the architecture. Paste in the version number. N nice. It should update, hopefully. I don't know why it didn't. Let me see if it's a refresh missing. Why did it not rename? Well, let's rename this folder first then. Uh, I was on rename. Let's remove some of the X's and paste the version number. There it took it. Let me go in in the source and see if it took. It took the PS1 file. So good. So we have that part. We have some more stuff. Let's prepare. Uh, let's create an uninstall script also because we will need that as well so we can uh, uh, let's ask uh, ChatGTP to write that for us so let's see 
We want something that install where it says Adobe Acrobat starts with that because it can sometimes it have DC in the name. So we're going to uninstall based on the name. So let's ask ChatGTP again, write a PowerShell script that uses, I will use VMI to uninstall any software starting with Adobe Acrobat. Let's see if we get the good script here. I like that part where uh, let's see, it explained, I like that. So it's gonna pattern, I like that because it, it can be something after. Just gonna see the script, if it looks good. Can I scroll to the left? You know what, let's copy this one and bring it into uh, a new file. We're gonna need one. So let's right click and create a new file. Be sure to show a file extension. If not, you're gonna, not going to see the TXT. Let's call this one uninstall Adobe Acrobat. And we don't need to put the version because this is going to work for everything. And .ps1. And one, yes, we want to change it. Once we're here, I also would like to change this one. It seems like I did something wrong there on the uninstall. I wanted the dash, nothing important. Nope. It did uh, work good. Okay, let's open this one in Notepad++, the uninstaller. Let's paste what ChatGTP gave us. And I'm just going to add again uh, some comments here. All in green are comments. What it does, uninstalls Adobe Acrobat. And again, I'm going to put the author. I'll put myself with ChatGPT. And again, the date. We are still the 28th of September, 2023. Let's see if this works. I like that it's, so what it does is, here's just the variable software pattern, and it's gonna use that here. And then it says, put another variable, let's say get VMI of everything that's installed, take any object where name is like, that's important. So it has to start with Adobe Acrobat and then this asterisk says it can be anything after, which is good for us because ours is Adobe Acrobat, but then it's uh, 64 bit. We could put the full name, but again, sometimes this one changes and it's called DC. Uh, uninstall, I like it. It's gonna take the software, if it finds multiple software to remove, in software to remove and then uninstall. I think this is gonna work, but we don't know. So I'm gonna copy this file, save it, and we have um, PowerShell IC open since the last time. So I'm just going to do Control N to open a new one. I'm going to paste it in here. Before we run it, I'm going to do a clear dash host just so it's clean down here. And let's see if it works to uninstall. So I'm run this. I could press F5. See if this uh, ChatGTP uh, is working. It's actually say uninstalling software Adobe Acrobat 64 bit. It's exactly the one we wanted to remove. So I'm confident that it's going to work. It's actually said uninstalled failed. Uh, I doubt that. Maybe. No, it actually is gone. It could be because I clean manually some of the registry keys. So maybe uh, it didn't like that, but the uninstallation for me, it seems to work fine. So what do we want to do next? Now we have a lot of things to do, but we also have a lot of things done. So we have an uh, uninstall script that works. We have, an un in we have an installer that works. Maybe we should test the installer last time because we added. So let's run the installer and this time it should add the register key that I removed manually and everything in one go. So if that works, then it's going to be ready to package. So I'm standing in the folder that doesn't exist. Uh, so I'm going to go back to the root and then in tune Adobe and source. So if we do LS here, here we have our install script. So let's run that one more time and just verify that everything works before we package it. After that, we are ready to package this and send up to Intune.
Okay, it took a minute or two, and this probably the operation completed successfully are our register keys. So let's start Adobe just quickly, Adobe Acrobat, and hopefully we don't get the login this time. Our installation uh, looks good. I think we are good to go. Yeah, you can be our new default one. Why not? You're done for that. So before, one last stuff I want to do before we move on in the next video to package this. Let's get the detection method. How do we know that it's installed successfully? We could look MSI code, but that change over updates. So I nearly prefer to look at the installation itself, the file. Uh, I really prefer that actually. So if we go program files, Adobe, Acrobat DC, Acrobat, do we have the Acrobat? Yeah, this is sort of the main file. So if we shift right click or just right click and copy as path, let's copy where the path is and we can add that as uh, maybe for the installer file or for now, yeah, just put it in an empty notepad or notepad plus plus. So this is the path to the file. So we can look if this file exists, but that's not really good enough. We want to see that it's the good version also. So right click, take properties. Let's see which version of this file it is. So if I do details, it is, let's put them next to each other. So let's verify that the version is 23.6.23. .6 Three, two, and zero. So our, this we will use for the um, uh, detection method to see that this file exists and it's this version or newer, then it's a success for this package. So it doesn't run on uh, packages who are newer than this. So it's actually do downgrade. Okay, perfect. Uh, I'm gonna run the uninstaller again so we can uh, reuse this one. So I'm gonna run the um, uninstall it's this one and uninstall it and in the next video we're gonna start to package this and upload it to intune and do a test run thank you very much for following along see you in the next video thank you very much